Thank you very much. Uh, I have to give a couple of warnings or caveats. This is the first time in my life that I prepare a presentation and I wrote it down. <laughs> Never, really, even when I was a graduate student, I can talk about my science with no problem. This is the kind of talk that my parents would be much better to give than me or my grandparents. So I, I had to write a few notes down. And I really appreciate Professor Levkovich for inviting me and you for coming. I wish I had more undergrads here, but they're gonna see their lack of presence here in their grades when I <laughs> grade them. Uh, we still have a month to go and it will be hard for them to recover. But uh, my, my own students are here. So I, I really appreciate you for coming. And I was kind of, we were given no instructions, so I kind of split in two with the indirect uh, non-instructions part. I want to teach you about my family. Uh, interesting, my mom was in Israel two weeks ago trying to find out more about our family. She's coming in two weeks, so she might teach me more here. So, and, and the second part, I'm gonna just, if it works, I'm gonna show you a three minutes video uh, that represents some of the research that somebody else did for us. So, and, and from my history, I wanna take a different angle. I wanna talk about how my family was welcomed multiple times in the last century. So, um, this part is sometimes emotional for me. My grand-grandfather in the early 30s uh, saw the Holocaust coming, uh, so before it was coming. And he split his family in two because his wife did not believe the Holocaust was coming. So he took my grandmother and another uh, of his daughters and left two daughters behind. So it's kind of hard to imagine, you know, anybody that is a parent here, not just leaving your spouse, leaving your kids behind because you are absolutely convinced you're gonna die. So you fight to save two of them. And it's hard for a lot of people to understand that most of the immigrants that you show pictures, so I'm alive today thanks to a tiny country called Uruguay with two million people, poor, has nothing else but cows. And my students will tell you 10 cows per person or whatever. <laughs> Understood that and accepted my grand grandfather with nothing. Actually, my four grandparents uh, were immigrants in Uruguay, a tiny country that has today 3 million people. So, North Carolina has about five. So, it's, uh, and, and welcomed them because understood that no matter where they're coming from, and I, I don't even know if they were literate or not. So that's a part of the story I don't know. But that was irrelevant. They welcomed them. And I was, I'm basically alive, thanks to Uruguay. Two, generators, two generations later, when I was 17, I moved to Israel. A completely different a reason for immigration. I actually was looking for my freedom, not my life. Although I was in a military dictatorship at that time. You know why I was 83 when I moved. Uh, it's, it was a very different immigration. I met my wife, so it was a good one. But I was looking for something completely different. What was equal is both countries welcome. They welcomed my grand grandfather uh, basically 50 years before. Israel welcomed me. Actually, with my wife, we experienced very interesting things in Israel. And I never felt not welcome in Israel in my entire life. But we experienced the immigration from Ethiopia over one night, where basically Israel flew to rescue. And two years ago, we met a person that was one of those rescued. And he told us stories about how he rescued people overnight in Ethiopia. But we also met the big immigration from Russia, which was about 20% of the population of Israel came in about one year, okay? So that was about five million people in Israel at that time, about one million from Russia in one year, okay? So 60 million of immigrants coming to the United States now. Imagine that, now, to a country that is a desert, okay? Has nothing but six great universities, nothing else. That's it. Mine has two Nobel laureates and took I always say Duke is the second best university in the planet, sorry. <laughs> so uh, then 
I came to, to United States uh, about 20 something years ago. It was a completely different immigration once again. I came for one year about 20 something years ago. We, we kept our house in a deposit in the north for many years. And I came as a very well-educated person. I graduated from the Technion. I had three degrees. I came to MIT. And, and, and of course, the doors were very open for me. As I say, I came for a year. And it's another story why I stayed 20-something. And probably I'm going to stay for the rest of my life here. But sometimes we forget, and when I was preparing this, sometimes we forget that even privileged people like all of you eh, are not safe in a country that doesn't welcome us. Two weeks ago, a Purple Heart Jew from Ukraine was told to go back to his country. The last time that happened was in the 30s to my great grandfather. Okay? That happened here by an elected person. Okay? And I said, what would my grand grandfather say if he heard that? Purple Heart decorator that immigrated when he was three. He was told to go back to his country. And my own kids are living in North Carolina because of other things that are happening in North Carolina that do not welcome them. So uh, my kid, uh, the one that will probably never come back to North Carolina, just got into early admission to Brown. So he's pretty privileged and pretty smart. We even have a dean from Brown. So even people like us are not very safe if we don't accept immigration. And a few of people I know carry their passports with them. Um, my students are too young, but I only remember in Uruguay under dictatorship to have it to carry my document. It's kind of scary that we have to carry it again here. So, now about science, because I already gave you the funny part of the story, which is my, my history. Uh, so I was, talk, I was told, and I forgot to put on my watch, but I hope I'm going to be on time. If not, please tell me. The video is three minutes. I was talk, to talk about my science. And I also want to, uh, before I go that, just give one more political statement, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Sorry, we, I know some of the leadership is not allowed to do that, but we students are allowed, and I know they support us. It's a great idea to talk about science uh, and the contributions of immigrants in science. But remember, I want pro Nobel laureates, but we also have immigrants that feed the Nobel laureate and pick up the fruit for the Nobel laureate. And they're equally important. And I'm, I know that Bob will agree with me uh, that uh, it's not just us that get all the awards that are important. And I think we're all together. You kick one out, you're kicking all of us out. So what do I do? I work on machine learning, computer vision. What's that? Something I should be showing you a lot of slides. One of the things that we do, which is going to be the video, and my partner is here, uh, Dr. Jerry Dawson. We are developing computational tools to help uh, children with developmental disorders, in particular autism. And uh, before I show you the video, let me just tell you a few other things. So, I'm, I'm being privileged in my lab. I have over 40 graduate students in my, in my life, which is telling to tell you how old I am. Uh, but uh, uh, we speak, so I have students from all around. And I was counting the other day. I don't remember any time we spoke less than five languages in my lab. So it looks like the United Nations, but with one fundamental difference, we get the job done, and not like in the United <laughs> Nations. So, so, uh, so we speak, fr currently we're speaking Chinese, French, uh, uh, um, um, I wrote them down, so I, I just don't forget. Russian. We speak Russian, Chinese, French, some of us, some of my students also speak English, not me. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but we just speak every language and we kind of switch. Hebrew, I just switch, turn around, speak with somebody in Hebrew. And, and, and also, in the research that we're doing on developmental disorders, it's quite interesting to see that, for example, we meet cultures where developmental disorders is actually a stigma. So then we go back to the lab and say, how can we help that? Oh, what if we can screen and diagnose in the privacy of your home? So we're just making the tool better because we understand our other cultures. We have to develop in Spanish. We have to develop for people that don't know how to read and write, so we have to make them very visual. 
So we ended up actually doing 10 times better science because we have this multicultural uh, thing inside the lab. And I, I just wanted, uh, before I, I go into that, I want to say that, that I think most of you and most of us kind of learned that science without immigration and diversity is just boring. Uh, it's just boring. And, and none of us like to do boring science. I think at the end, Professor Lefkowitz was explaining a, a, a few months ago how he got to what he got, and it was just for curiosity and fun. He wasn't expecting to develop one third of the FDA drugs. It was just curiosity, fun, and enjoying, and it ended up with one third of the FDA drugs. But that's very seldom is our goal, because we will never achieve it if you put that as your goal. So I'm going to try to run a video. Jerry and I are, are actually having to give an entire 75 minutes talk tomorrow at noon, free lunch, uh, so if you want to come. So I'm not going to spend uh, time, but I, hopefully it's going to run. Uh, Amazon, uh, I'm not trying to market, they gave us a gift, and they came one day and, and created a three minutes video, which I think they did such a wonderful job, much better than me explaining. So if we run that video. Grayson was our first child. We thought maybe something was a little bit off pretty early. We were told the wait lists for diagnosis with autism are really long, and I think they've only gotten worse from friends that I've talked to now. The computer can see things that the human eye simply can't see. Well, when I first started doing autism research, the average waiting time for a parent who's worried that their baby or child might have autism is about a year. And so the challenge was how do we come up with an app to be able to detect those early symptoms of autism, such as not making eye contact, not having normal facial expressions in a child's home. If a child is diagnosed at 18 to 24 months and provided two years of intervention, the average IQ gain is 17 points. So this has a huge impact on people's lives. And when I met Guillermo Sapiro, and he showed me that we could do what I've been doing in the clinic using a computer, that was an amazing moment for me. So I've been doing computer vision and machine learning basically all my life. Using computer vision and machine learning, we wanted to see if we could help create an automatic analysis of autism and autism spectrum disorder. Guillermo can use computer vision analysis to assess things like facial expression and attention. And so we built a set of movies that elicit these behaviors. And then we can show these on either a smartphone or a smart tablet and use the camera in the device to measure the child's response. Data gets sent off from the phone to the cloud, and then we would be able to analyze that data, run it through our algorithms to produce our estimates of where the person is looking at. Now that we have this tool, what we hope to do is combine the eye tracking data, the gaze data, along with the motion and jointly see if they can help in the assessment of the risk of autism. Families simply don't have access to the professionals that they need. The idea that we could use technology to increase access, that's just a wonderful thought to me. Every minute, every hour that you're able to, to implement those strategies that's helping your child learn that social development and learn it with you. And as a parent, that is really rewarding. Yeah. I think that if we can do just a small thing to change one kid, I think I would go to sleep with a smile. Again, thank uh, Professor Lefkovich for doing this. Thank you for, for coming, and, and thanks for supporting all of us that came from very different places in the world just to do this all together. Thank you. Thank you.